YouTube, I am a victim to my Twitch chat. They're like a tiny little cult that constantly is nagging my ears, okay? My big floppy ears to watch random things such as Kirby lore. Yeah. So today's video is Kirby lore. <laughs> I will just do it. I don't know what else to say to preamble. I played Kirby in the Amazing Mirror for like the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. I had the SP. And I've played Kirby Air Ride. Played a little bit of Brawl. That's about it. I like Smash Brothers and all that stuff. Anyways, so let's get straight into it. Before we get started, you know what to do, baby. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm guads. On top of that, join us live over on Twitch so you can be part of the cult that forces me to watch things on their time and their demand. Or you can leave a comment down below to tell me what to watch next. But hey, don't post links. Links are cringe. But you can always recommend which video title you would want me to see next. And I'm more than happy to check it out. Anyways, let's get into it. Warning, this video contains spoilers for all Kirby games. That's your warning. Let's do it. <laughs> oh shit, it's Meriwether! Hi, how are you? For those of you guys who don't know, Meriwether is... Should I say a thigh-slapping VTuber? How do we put that one? <laughs> a doggo thigh-slapping VTuber? An incredible artist? <laughs> what? <laughs> The time that I raided you was a thigh slapping moment, so I don't know. That was. <laughs> it was, uh, yep. <laughs> you were trying to prove that you didn't have pants on, then he slapped your thigh. That's all I know. That's. <laughs> I walked in on it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but yeah, now we're checking out Kirby lore. So, oh. So that's what's happening. The greatest uh, lore creator ever. Okay. Oh, cause they yeah, cause Mary Mother does like a lot of the um, animations for VTuber like lore stuff too. Mm hmm. I should not have eaten a cookie before going into this video. There's a bad call. Now I'm chewing. Just a silly little writer. I mean, I'm also a silly little YouTuber. That doesn't make us all not talented, though. You know? Actually, I should say I'm a silly little commentator, but I don't really do esports anymore. Now I just VTube. <laughs> Alrighty, let's jump in. Meow. Long ago, in a time before pink puffs and air rides, there lived the ancients, an entire civilization completely shrouded in mystery, save for a few key relics they left behind. But who cares about any of that, because <gasps> on an unrelated planet- Wait, far is that their little mascot for their channel? Because that is so cute. I pushed- I rewinded too far. I should have used the arrows! ...shrouded in mystery, save for a few key relics they left behind. But who cares about any- It's a bean! That's a bean with a cute nose. That's a bean. Look at the little, like, nubs for fingers. That's so cute. It's Moogle from... I don't play Final Fantasy. I apologize. <laughs> you guys know all I did for years was do fighting games. I haven't done anything else or watched anything else but fighting game stuff for years, okay? <laughs> you should try it sometime. I have a PS5. I could do Final Fantasy 16 at least. <laughs> of that, because on an unrelated planet far, far away, there lived an innocent pink puff named Kirby, a being of unlimited power who usually likes to spend his days eating, sleeping, or some variation of the two. However, this would all change when a certain self-proclaimed monarch would steal all the food in Dreamland, initiating a rivalry that would be sure to last an eternity. Hold up, pause. Did this come out before or after Super Monkey Ball 2? Super Monkey Ball 2 came out in 2001. When did this come out? Hold on. What year was this? <laughs> before 2001? 
1996. Okay, original uh, Super Monkey Ball was 2000. 2001 was Super Monkey Ball 2. Then there's the arcade version. That was 1999, I believe, for that. So I'm just checking because it's the exact same plot as Super Monkey Ball 2 where Dr. Baboon stole all the bananas because he wanted to fuck Mimi. That's canon, by the way. He tried to rub her shoulders and shit. It was weird. It's a weird game. I don't know if you guys played it or not. Used to speed run that. Weird game. <laughs> at least when they felt like it. As while King Dedede would be the first antagonist in the Kirby timeline, he'd soon transition into less of an actual villain and more of an ally slash punching bag for Kirby to wail on no! in just about every game in the series. Since whether it be Dedede trying to prevent Kirby from releasing an actual nightmare demon or just being possessed by an otherworldly force, this king never seems to catch a break. Aww. Though speaking of possession, that brings us to our first real piece of of Kirby lore, Dark Matter. First revealing itself in Kirby's Dreamland 2, Dark Matter is an amorphous dark entity, more often than not taking the form of a black sphere with an I've definitely gone against that in, in Amazing Mirror as well. That's cool. Dark Matter seemed to be a I never played the original. simple antagonist, what with its only goal being to shroud the world in darkness. If anything, the most sinister thing about Dark Matter is the fact that it could possess whoever it wanted to do its will, including and usually limited to King DVD. Oh, that's However, so sad. While the first appearance of Dark Matter was more of a lone force, attacking Dreamland solely because it was lonely and had no friends. That's actually real, by the way. In Kirby's Dreamland 3, he's just a sad, edgy bean. No, that's so sad. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the chat. There's gonna be at least one chatter who's like, he's just like me for real, for real. I was waiting for it. Nobody? Really? Impressive. Impressive. <laughs> the next installment We've of the Dark Matter trilogy, we would finally begin to see the bigger picture in terms of this ambiguous villain. Enter Zero, the supposed source and leader of Dark Matter, who, much like the one before it, targeted Dreamland in an effort to engulf the planet in darkness. Though unlike the lone Dark Matter that had mm -hmm. attacked before, Zero comes much closer to completing its mission, with the planet becoming fairly engulfed before Kirby put a stop to it. But Dang. how exactly did he put a stop to it. Well, let me explain because yes, this is important. Essentially, dark matter in general, alongside being made up of, well, dark matter, are beings of concentrated negative energy and emotions, making their only real weakness the opposite of that. Po <laughs> Quickly, Kirby, use positive pussy power! Go, go, go! That's what we're built for! Emotions. Just take the I hit my desk so hard I played the video. I did not hit- okay. Fuck. Hold on, can you do it again? Fuck, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> to love love stick, a weapon so forged it again. from the gratitude of everyone Kirby helped along the way, which proved to be the downfall of Zero and its cronies. However, that being said, not all Dark Matter are necessarily evil. Take Gooey, for example, <gasps> a member of Dark There's Matter that baby! somehow broke away from Zero's control altogether and formed a will of its own. Look at How did this happen? <laughs> well, we'll just have to go into that later because we've still got a lot to cover. Next up, after Zero was seemingly brutally annihilated, on Pop Star, a similar force began to attack a faraway planet known as Ripple Star, oh. engulfing the planet, much like a certain orb we all know and love. Unfortunately for them, though, Dark Matter struck fast this time, and Ripple Star ended up completely succumbing to its invaders. Well, goddamn! That escaped with the only means to stop them. Now, I won't give you a complete summary of Kirby 64, since aside from Dark Matter possessing some familiar faces and the mysterious ruins on Rockstar, there really isn't that much to unpack in the beginning. Instead, it's towards the end of the game that things really start taking a turn okay. for the dark when Kirby arrives at the fifth planet in the game, Shiver Star. Because, I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Plus, hey, I guess this kind of explains where Adeline came from, or at least her ancestors. Though moving- Who the fuck is Adeline? Am I supposed to know who that is? <laughs> I, oh my god. I- Bro. <laughs> I feel like even in the Kirby lore video, I still don't know shit. Oh my god, okay. ...on to the corrupted Ripple Star. After defeating Miracle Matter and expunging the planet of all dark matter, the Dark Star reveals itself with a familiar face at its core. But hold up a minute, wasn't Zero destroyed in Kirby's Dreamland 3? Well, 
Kinda. In the case of 64, it's heavily implied Zero was revived using the body that was cast away towards the end of its first fight. So after yet another mildly disturbing battle in a game made for kids, Dark Matter was once again supposedly defeated, never to return again. At least for oh. another game or two. So taking a step back from Dark Matter, let's talk Kirby Superstar. Now lore-wise, there there's so there's I don't know any of these Kirby games so far. I know they only name off like two. I didn't know they exist. I, I mean, for the end, mind you, I was born in 96, so I guess it makes sense why I didn't know that one. But I didn't know there was one for the N64. I knew about, like, eh, I didn't really know much about the N64. We had one, but we rented all of our games from Blockbuster. So the only ones I ever played were, like, Star Fox. And, I was, and then we played um, Mario 64, but that was at my cousin's place. And they wouldn't let us borrow it because they knew we would just keep it. And... <laughs> I played Diddy Kong Racing. I played, we played a fuck ton of Mario Party 3. Have y'all played Mario Party 3? That game is goaded. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, we played the, we played the Smash for, for N64 as well. Yeah. But we ended up getting a GameCube, so we ended up playing Melee after that. We would rent that one from Blockbuster instead. That much to be had here, what with most of the sub-games being standalone stories like Dyna Blade or Revenge of Meta Knight, where Meta Knight attempts to start an actual war just to get Dreamland's inhabitants to be less lazy. But undoubtedly, aside from those, the most important sub-game within the game is Milky Way Wishes, where Kirby is tricked by the scheming jester Marks into summoning Galactic Nova, a mysterious clockwork star of then unknown origin. You see, once Nova is summoned by I someone, wish I took this much the power to grant one wish, <laughs> no matter how small or large. So in turn, after Marks got the sun and moon to fight each other in order to trick Kirby, literally all it took was him jumping in to say his wish first to turn the seemingly harmless machine into a force of mass destruction, with it taking the might of both the sun and the moon to stop its advance. Though of course, even with all that said, the both of them never stood a chance against the seemingly bottomless pit of power that is Kirby, as he quickly defeated them in no time at all. But it doesn't- You think this motherfucker does DMT? <laughs> Not the video creator. Right? Like, when you're making Kirby, <laughs> there's no way you ain't on the Joe Rogan shit. <laughs> you know? The Joe Rogan kind of drugs. <laughs> like, you gotta- you gotta really be on some stuff. <laughs> you're like, listen, this pink blob with feet? <laughs> yeah. That's the one. That's the one, dog. Don't worry about it. We're competing with Italian plumbers, okay? This is this is the sauce, I <laughs> <laughs> and there, because 12 years later, Kirby Superstar would be remade into Kirby Superstar Ultra, bringing with it a massive new load of information to add on to the existing story. Simply put, with Superstar Ultra came the beginning of one of Hal's favorite new ways to sneak in lore where you'd least expect That's it. That's a dog? A screen description. I never looked at the logo close enough exactly before. And wouldn't exactly be very lore heavy this time around, save for one in particular, they'd become far more important in the following games. But pause screen aside, most importantly, with Superstar Ultra came four completely new sub-games on top of the original seven. There was Revenge of the King, a direct sequel to the very first game in the series, Helper to Hero, a version of the arena only with helpers, True Arena, an even harder version of the normal arena, and the star of the show, Meta Nightmare Ultra, where for the very first time, you get to play as the infamous knight himself. Now, Meta Nightmare Ultra is a bit of a tricky case, since Technically, the events that take place in it aren't exactly canon. Instead, they're more of a- Oh my god, it's a filler game! <laughs> A what if scenario where the events that take place within the modes flesh out certain aspects of the lore while never canonically taking place within the main story. Case in point, Galacta Knight, the final boss of the mode and strongest warrior in the galaxy, sealed away due to fear of his immense power, has technically never made an appearance in the main series canon. Though at the same time, that doesn't mean he doesn't exist somewhere out there and could very well oh. show up in the main series canon at any time. The true arena also falls under this category category as well, serving as a what-if scenario with the conception of Mark's soul. A stronger version of Mark's, who after surviving the explosion of Nova, absorbed its power to get revenge on Kirby. And as great as all that is, by far the most important aspect of this is his new pause screen description, as it contains- Bro, I thought this whole game series was just a franchise 
of Kirby giving the suck and getting weapons. I didn't think it was like... Like, I knew about the some of the Dark Matter stuff. I knew about some of the boxing for real, for real. I didn't... I knew King... I... This got real elaborate. <laughs> it's, we're not even that far in. Some pretty heavy foreshadowing. <laughs> to quote, he absorbed a Nova's power to bring back his evil soul. Notice the fact it says a Nova's instead of the Nova's. While there is a chance it could be a translation error, considering the events of future Kirby games, I'm not so sure. Though we'll get to that later, because next up on the chopping block is Kirby and the Amazing yes! World, an incredibly important <laughs> game in terms of lore. <laughs> It's like my favorite. It's my favorite game for for my uh for my Game Boy Advance SP. This is my favorite one. Mario like uh Mario Bros. Three Advance Four, whatever they called it. That was good too. It was like the two main ones I played. But oh fuck yeah, I loved this game. As it contains the first instance of the mirror dimension. To start from the literal top, high in the skies above Dreamland, there exists a mirror portal into the mirror world, a complete reflection of Dreamland, including mirror world counterparts to its inhabitants. One day, Yay! after sensing a dark force emanating from the mirror, Meta Knight took action to stop the evil at its source, diving directly into the mirror world, only to be immediately ambushed by his evil counterpart, Dark Meta Knight. Yeah! Plus, to add insult to injury, he'd also come out of the mirror to attack Kirby as well, splitting him into four versions of himself, much like another certain Nintendo game that came out around this time. But similarities aside, after journeying through the mirror world and defeating Dark Meta Knight once and for all, the true Whoa! mastermind is revealed, Dark Mind. And wouldn't you know it, he's the mirror world equivalent of Zero, corrupting the mirror yeah! world much like Zero corrupted the normal one. Though thankfully, once Dark Mind was defeated, the mirror world was left in the hands of Shadow Kirby, who would continue to protect it in Meta Knight's and Kirby's stead. <laughs> no, nothing bad will ever come from the mirror world again. Uh, my commentary for this part is just me cheering. I apologize, that's all I can give you, because I fucking love this part. <laughs> it's just, my nostalgia's hitting me, like, in waves. That's all I got for you. I'm sorry, right. Shadi. It's like, it's, well, it is what it is. All I can say is we'll get to that soon. Moving past Amazing no! Mirror, Canvas Curse, and Mass Attack. Not moving past! Amazing Mirror, take it back! <laughs> Since the latter two are pretty much contained to themselves, we arrive at Kirby's Squeak Squad. At first, this game seems to have- Huh? <laughs> Kirby what? Squeak Squad? What? <laughs> Have y'all even heard- have you guys- do you guys- have you guys played the game? I was like, have you heard of it? Have you played the game? Do y'all- Who's ever played this game? Have another pretty self-contained story. What with Kirby chasing after a piece of stolen cake that a gang of thieves known as the Squeak Squad stole from him. However, as the game oh, progresses, shit, they and the squeaks happen upon Oh, that's the rats! They they've taken the cake! Grant infinite power. It turns out they'd get more than they bargained for, with their leader De Roach being possessed by Dark Nebula, <laughs> a member of Dark Matter that had been sealed away in the gangsta. era, left alone for eons. And much like the rest of its kind, Dark Nebula would <laughs> Wait, be. Wait, my fiance what you mean by that my fiance stealing the cake is that what you mean what you mean by that <laughs> what about my fiance <laughs> hold up huh should i be concerned hello <laughs> match for Kirby, being absolutely decimated by the triple star. So now with all those bits and pieces of lore out of the way, yep. it's finally time for the next massive truckload of lore in the form of a little conniving alien who crash lands on Dreamland. Enter Maglore, the main villain of Kirby's return to Dreamland, who solely through dialogue reveals a lot of important stuff. Okay. But before anything else, let's talk about the Ancients. First referred to as such by Maglore, the Ancients were a highly advanced civilization who mysteriously vanished at some point in history due to an unknown cause. Originally, they all lived on Halkandra, a planet extremely far away, hidden in another dimension. Now, coincidentally, Maglor also says he's not- I'm sorry, Kirby got dimension- I mean, we did know it have dimensional travel, we should've- Okay, you know what? I'm questioning at the wrong time, because clearly it does, we've already discussed it earlier in the video. I just didn't realize Kirby was this deep. I'm gonna be super real with you, I- I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but this isn't like, it's just, 
It's a pink blob. <laughs> you know? Native to Hal Kendra as well. Right? Though considering his history with telling the truth, that could very well be false. <laughs> like, just take his ship, the Lore Starcutter. While it does seem he's telling the truth about obtaining it on Hal Kendra, rather than excavating it in Dangerous Dinner, he most likely just stole the thing and heavily modified it into a weapon to kill Landia, an endeavor that didn't <laughs> exactly have the best results. This was also later backed up in Star Allies when the Lore in Lore Starcutter is revealed to mean paradise, confirming the ship was not intended for battle. Though in the same string of dialogue that he reveals that, he also mentions something very worthy to note. Alongside the lore star cutter, the ancients were also responsible for a plethora of other amazing relics of untold power, with clockwork stars and items that bring dreams to life being two references he gives. Okay. Off the bat, that connects quite a few dots. Plus, on a side note, when you meet certain conditions on the extra mode for Return to Dreamland, Mag Lore mentions he actually came to Dreamland already knowing about Kirby, with someone he knows very well having fought with Kirby in the past. Based on these implications, and some other information found in later games, this mysterious figure is most likely Marks from Superstar, essentially oh, confirming shit. that he survived the explosion. Okay! I'm s- I love the linear way he's explaining information, because if you were just like, oh yeah, so probably Marks, I'd be like, who? But I'm glad that you're like, <laughs> there's a quiz after. Oh, fuck. No, it's cool because he explained who Marx was earlier and then the alternate version of Marx that we got, but also the alternate version of Meta Knight. But Meta Knight, the alternate version is actually not canon to the plot. So we might not sh actually get in the game, but there's a possibility that we could get in a future game. Anywho, I am paying attention. I can, I got it. <laughs> like, I, I got it. It's just, also, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the problem. I can retain, I can understand, but it's also like, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> of Nova. So fast forward a bit through the story, and once Maglor tricks Kirby into defeating Landia for the Master Crown it protects, he immediately puts it on the first chance he gets, activating the crown and transforming into a much more sinister form, intending to conquer the entire universe with his newfound power. <laughs> However, Yo, like King Diddy got, D got, oh, oh God, the best reaction face. Wait a second. I gotta learn. Hold on, hold on. I got it. I got this. I think I got it. I think I got it. I'm learning. I'm learning. Hold up. <laughs> That's crazy. Power. <laughs> However, like those who seeked relics of untold power before him, Maglor wasn't exactly aware of the Master Crown's true nature. And as his battle with Kirby progressed, the crown began <laughs> to show certain traits that weren't present before when it was under Landia's nullifying effect on it. Maybe it's the sudden appearance of an eye on the front of the crown. Or <gasps> an eye? An eye on the front of the crown! No! Don't return. We've already conquered. The fact that it's clearly gone from a crown to an irremovable headpiece. But whatever it is, there's no doubt that the crown itself is sentient, and rather than Maglor utilizing its powers, it's the master crown itself utilizing Maglor. No! Just take the third phase of his fight, where after Maglor fails to defeat Kirby even with the power of the master crown, the crown takes things into its own hands, completely reforming Maglor into a projection of itself. Oh all god. But confirming the origin of the master crown's power with a certain certain characteristic that sometimes appears within Maglor's mouth. All in all, Maglor definitely learned never to play with the powers of literal dark gods ever again. Well, and that's good. Take up the much more positive venture of building Wait, is that supposed to be a life lesson to us too? Because I do be fuck up with dark gods for real, for real. Um, <laughs> I got a friend who's super into crystals. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure she's into that shit. So whatever she into, I'm into. <laughs> I don't... It ain't intentional. Usually I'm just the one eating snacks while she does it. But like... I'm down, bestie. <laughs> like, I was supposed to repeat what you say. Got you. Got you, bestie. I probably summon some shit at some point in my life. I just kind of do whatever everyone else does. <laughs> I'm sheeple. <laughs> I'm not like the gang leader for my friend group, okay? Like, it's just like, all right, man, I'm just here for the snacks. Fuck it, man. That's not, it's just not that deep for me. Whatever y'all want to do, I... <laughs> 
amusement parks. So yeah, that got pretty dark in more ways than one. If only I could say things get any better from here on out. Next up, we'll be heading to the scenic heights of Floralia, a group of six floating islands that Kirby finds himself in after his house <gasps> was swept up by the dream no! The only problem is, <laughs> alongside Kirby, Kirby King Dedede was also swept up with a spider-like mage named Taranza mistaking him for the hero of Dreamland and kidnapping him as a result. Oh damn, that's you the wrong motherfucker you got. seems peaceful, it's actually ruled by a tyrannical queen who will stop at nothing to assure her rule is You know what I learned? Don't trust nobody with a crown. You feel me? I Last person st like took the crown, put it on, crown was corrupted. This queen got a crown corrupt. I don't know, man. I'ma just say it now. I'ma just say it. <laughs> this is where I make a Queen of England joke, but I just don't got one on me. I don't know. Someone pull up a Jay Schlatt clip. Maybe. <laughs> I don't got a Queen joke on me. I don't know, she's dead. There you go, that's a joke. I don't know. I couldn't think of a punchline, I'm sorry. Disturbed. Overall, <laughs> a seemingly simple plot for a Kirby game, all things considered. Well, at least it appears that way. Once the main story reaches its climax and Kirby meets the vanity-obsessed Queen Sectonia, there's clearly something off. Especially considering the Queen would go as far as to physically fuse with the Dreamstalk solely in an attempt to preserve her beauty for all eternity. Well, to find the answers to this mystery, uh -huh. we'll need to look at the other modes within Triple Deluxe, because much like Meta Nightmare Ultra before it, Triple Deluxe brings DDD to her. Another <laughs> what-if scenario where the mode shows what would happen if King DDD climbed the Dreamstalk instead of Kirby. Wait, that's so now, cute! Like Meta that's Knight so cute! The only real difference in this mode is its finale, where after defeating Queen Sectonia, out of seemingly nowhere, the dimension mirror from Amazing Mirror appears, what? forcing DDD to fight the Mirror World version of himself, Shadow DDD. And that's not all either. Yo, what? Defeating Shadow DDD, the king actually enters the mirror itself to reveal an even edgier dark Meta Knight, what? hungry for revenge. But was that blood always... that went off of his blade there? To reveal an even edgier dark Meta Knight, hungry for. Holy shit! I am the darkest Meta Knight. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yo, no, that sounds good. Yeah, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> Revenge. But what does this all even mean? Well, let's take a step back here and start from the beginning. Based on information spread across a variety of pause screens, before the events of Triple Deluxe, Queen Sectonia wasn't always a tyrannical monster bent on world domination. In fact, she didn't even look the same. Instead, looking much like her then best friend at the time, Taranza. You see, at this point, Taranza actually had feelings for Sectonia, and as a gift to her, went into the mirror world and stole the Dimension mirror. No they have canon love plots? Huh? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not knowing the mirror actually Dude. served as a prison for Dark Meta Knight, who ever since being defeated had been festering in there, slowly but surely corrupting the very mirror itself with his hatred. So Yo! Heard, you cannot be corrupting the mirror with your hatred! That connects to the mirror world. I fuck with those homies for real, for real. You cannot. Got the mirror from Taranza. It slowly began to change. Dark Kirby not been doing his job. Into it. Soon, dissatisfied with her current form, she'd use magic to make herself more beautiful, resulting in the wasp-like appearance you see her with in the game. And once she gazed into the mirror enough, just about every shred of her former self had vanished, being replaced by an endless hunger for power and beauty. Fast forwarding a bit back. Please give me Slanesh vibes. To the events of the main story, the Sectonia you see here is but a husk of her former self. With even Taranza realizing that the only mm -hmm. solution to save both Sectonia and her subjects is to help Kirby permanently put an end to her. While it's definitely a victory without a doubt, what with the Sky People finally being freed from Sectonia's iron fist, for Taranza it's bittersweet, since all Has that he... motherfucker loved? No! No, Taranza! Learn to love yourself, not these hoes, Taranza. You don't deserve to get done this way. We get it, you kind of a villain, and you kind of snatch up King DDD because you thought he was the hero, but no, Taranza. No. <laughs> knew it had to be done, he can't help but mourn the loss of the one he loved. Aww. So yeah, wasn't that delightful? He knew it had to be done, 
but he missed his boo thing. If you thought that was depressing, just wait until you see what's next. Long after the events of Triple Deluxe, Popstar was once again at peace, its inhabitants living out their lives as they always have, when suddenly, out of nowhere, the sky was blotted out by something immense and spherical in shape. Except instead of that sphere being made up of a matter most dark, this one was an immense spacecraft called the Access Arc, home of the Haltman Works Company, a company infamous across the galaxy for mechanizing entire planets and harvesting their natural resources. I really thought we gonna get the eyeballs back. I thought it was gonna be dark matter. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> what is happening? We're going into corporate overlord... Uh, just... Wait, oh, oh, Monopoly! They have a Monopoly on the market because they're like the biggest dealer too and they're like probably the only ones who are inter... Galactic for their dealings of weaponry and machines, right? God damn, dude. So in turn, <laughs> while Kirby was sleeping under a tree, King Dedede and Capitalism Meta Knight is the watched villain. <laughs> on in horror as Planet Popstar was completely overwhelmed within a matter of minutes. Any retaliation soon proving to be futile. Though like always, not oh, everything is exactly as it seems, and this time it won't take any extra modes to reveal that. So as Kirby retaliates against the Access Arc, destroying each of its five legs embedded into the planet, he meets the executive secretary of the company, Susie. And although she doesn't reveal all that much during her conversations with Kirby, she does mention a certain mother computer that will become extremely important in a bit. Because We found Kirby mother. Susie has mentioned mother. Who is mother? Kirby destroys all five legs and enters the access arc, he meets President Haltman, the supposed mastermind oh, behind no. the invasion of Popstar and all the planets before it. After smugly introducing himself to Kirby, he reveals Star Dream, an extremely powerful supercomputer built using the blueprints and knowledge left behind by an advanced civilization. Ring any bells? Well, after being beaten by Kirby, things take a turn for the worse, because once the enraged Haltman okay. decides to activate Star Dream, Susan Susie jumps in and takes his Susie a real one what the hell control helmet off in the process, leaving him vulnerable to be analyzed and assimilated into the now sentient computer. Though wait a second, why would she even do that? Well once again, let's rewind everything a bit. By yet again piecing together the information spread across countless pause screens throughout the game, long before the events of the main story, the Haltman Works Company was simply a robotics company led by Max Prophet Haltman alongside <laughs> his then young daughter. <laughs> Susanna, nicknamed Susie. At some point in their travels across space, as we already know, they came across the blueprints for a powerful wish-granting supercomputer, and immediately okay. began work on rebuilding it. That However, would make sense, during yeah. this process, meanwhile Haltman was testing Star Dream's space-time transport program, there was a terrible accident warping the young Susie into another dimension. Thankfully- Oh, man. Susie would survive the ordeal and eventually return to her father as an adult. However, to her dismay, Haltman would not be the same man she remembered him as. You see, when the accident occurred, Haltman believed his daughter had been killed in the process and stricken with grief began to become obsessed with completing Star Dream in order to bring her back. Unfor oh, that's so sad! That's so sad! He's just... I just a bean. Oh my god. Like, if I had babies and I lost one and I was grieving, I could bring them back with a magical machine. Fuck it, we ball. You know? Uh, by any means. Us babies. That's that's completely f oh that's so sad. Fortunately though, due to Star Dream and its mental interface not being complete, Haltman began to lose both his compassion and memory of his daughter, changing the goal of his company from her revival to infinite prosperity. Oh no, because he started getting fucked with. Oh, his mentals were just shot. No. Be at this point that Haltman would begin mechanizing planets and harvesting their resources, as in the business plan drafted by Star Honestly, Dream, it was the most. That's a really dope villain to make. <laughs> like, that's actually so goaded for how to make a really well-written villain. Like, one, you give him a super tragic backstory. Two, you show his like kind of like how he devolves into the character he is today. 
And three, you show the negative impact he has on others. Like, he kind of hit the formula. Effective way to maintain eternal prosperity for the company. However, by this point, Holtman still wasn't completely gone, and once he laid eyes on Susie for the first time in years, he sensed a faint familiarity with oh. her, in turn, making her his executive assistant. Going back to the climax of the main story now, after seeing what her father had become, in order to teach him a lesson, Susie had been making preparations to steal Star Dream and sell it off to any startup company that wanted it unfortunately <laughs> unbeknownst girl <laughs> girl <laughs> not selling into a startup company what she's like i'm gonna support local business Susie, no <laughs> Susie, no <laughs> get your wishes queen no Susie, no be selfish to anyone, <laughs> after analyzing the universe through the Haltman Works Company and being exposed to the deranged Haltman's desire to mechanize everything, Stardream had developed an extreme hatred for all forms of life. So, as a result, Ooh, that's not good. Susie interrupted the startup process of Stardream, the computer took to absorbing all that was left of Haltman's memories down to its very soul, fusing the two into an all powerful being bent on mass destruction. Of course, Wait, now, what? realizing the grave mistake she just made, Made, Susie completely changes her tune and sends Kirby on his way to take down the godlike supercomputer given the soul of a broken man. And oh my god! Wait, what? That's so. Oh my god! That's a babe! She had to. Oh my, I'm sorry, my brain is just breaking. Imagine, like, your daddy's going through hell, basically, because he th thought you were dead for that long and just lost himself in the process, and then you knocked off the thing off his head because you were worried about him, and you didn't want him to go down this dark path, and the darkness consumed him anyways because the thing, the robot itself is corrupting him and absorbed him into itself, and they became one entity? Oh my god! That's not fair! That's not- and then, and then Susie's just like, yep, I guess go kill my pops and the stupid robot. Off you go, Kirby. Like, damn! You gotta, like, oh, and no. Just wait, because it oh, doesn't no. end there. As Kirby fights Stardream in the actual halberd of all things, to make itself stronger, Stardream attaches itself to the Access Arc, transforming the entire ship into a sentient planet. Ironically enough, this also ends up completing Stardream, as underneath the steel plating of the Access Arc, it's revealed that the entire ship was actually a repurposed clockwork star with Stardream. Shut Dream. the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely, shut the fuck up. There's no way this stupid clockwork came back. Shut up. <laughs> I thought I thought we moved away from this. Oh my god. What a twist. <laughs> being the final oh piece my to God. it. Yet again, a technology that was meant to be used for the good of everyone fallen into the wrong hands. Though before we move on to the, as of now, final chunk of Kirby lore, Planet Robobot has a bit more in store for us. First off, like Superstar Ultra and Triple Deluxe, Robobot brought in yet another what-if scenario with- Wait, Meta hello? So does that game just end with you beating the fuck out of her dad who's formed with it? Is there nothing- do we not- can we not use the wish to bring her father back properly? Do we not? We just fought the shit? That's it? Turns. A mode that while does give some pretty valuable pause screen info, has a finale that is just insane. So in No, he did? Oh, that's messed up. Particular what if timeline, once Meta Knight defeats Haltman, Star Dream recognizes him as its new admin and decides to test his abilities. And again, while this section doesn't really contain too much lore, it more just goes to show just how powerful Star Dream is, with it being capable of not only producing a clone of the original Dark Matter Swordsman, but Sectonia as well, with it even That's going cool. as far as to summon Galactonite, who in retaliation hey, immediately. Galactonite! I thought that motherfucker wasn't gonna come back because technically it wasn't canon, but now it's back and now it's here. The technically this is like a spin-off thing and you consider it right, it's not really Meta Knight who's doing this shit, but oh still cool that it showed up. Destroys the computer. Plus, hey, that mode aside, in Robobot's true arena, there's another fun little tidbit Hal decided to see. I kinda in. like that they Basically, have I like how they have like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how they have like side ways of their own little side versions of stuff. With, like, things that are, I mean, like, 
yeah, canon, but not canon, because technically it's another mode, but technically, like, we know that Kirby did it, but you could also say that Meta Knight did it, and it also did all that stuff. Like, I kind of get it. It's kind of convoluted. But we, we understand. I think we understand together, right? Yeah, side stories and modes. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but in the world of Kirby, anything can be what you believe. <gasps> In the final, <laughs> final, final phase of the Star Dream fight, when Star Dream sucks Kirby into its core, every time you destroy a piece of Star Dream's internal mechanisms, you can actually hear a distorted version of Haltman screaming in pain, showing that while Star Dream had erased most of his soul, fragments of it still remain forever. That's fucking terrible! Why is this game so dark? within the malevolent Nova until someone destroys it for good. Though now, with all that said, we've reached the final stretch. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for quite possibly one of the most important lore dumps in Kirby history with the story of Kirby's star allies. Long ago, star in allies! deep space, a certain dark power was so sealed away within a purple crystal called the Jemba Heart by a group Jemba. of unknown heroes. Jemba. They'd accomplished this by embedding several heart spears within the crystal to seal the evil away. Oh. However, many eons later, long after those said heroes had vanished, a new group arose who, instead of wanting to seal the darkness, revered it and yearned for its return. One such member of this Man, group- Man, these cult-ass mofuckers. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> came very close to their goal as well, succeeding in removing the heart spears trapping the darkness. The I only am problem the darkness. was, since he didn't fully understand how to break the seal himself, the ritual went wrong, causing the Jamba heart to explode, sending its fragments all over the galaxy. Are you telling me it's basically Inuasha? And we just shattered the shattered the pearl or the whatever they called the You know what I'm talking about? It just scattered all around, and they had to go travel for it. That's what this motherfucker just did. God damn it, don't pull a Kagome! <laughs> she messed up with that stupid ass arrow. God damn it! <laughs> Pop star included. So in turn, with the entire galaxy once again being at stake, Kirby set out to take action, and this time he wasn't alone. You see, in terms of Kirby games, Star Allies has honestly become the infinity war of the series, <laughs> with friends and foes from past games all coming together to help Kirby save the cosmos. And it's not like they're just shoved in to be in the game, as there's even explanation to some of the more unlikely allies coming to Kirby's aid. For Marx, as was shown in the True Arena cutscene in Superstar Ultra, he did actually manage to survive his head-on collision with Nova, only instead of taking revenge like he did in that timeline, he changed himself for the better. For Dark oh, Meta good Knight, for him. probably the sketchiest dream friend out of them all, he's mainly just interested in the dark powers of the Jamba Heart, probably due to its similarity with his lost master. For DeRoach, well, he yeah, just wants Roach. to steal the Jamba Hearts for himself as he thinks they're ordinary jewels. For Taranza, sadly, he still hasn't been able to let go of Sectonia and no! believes that if he goes to the- No! He's still yearning for his boo thing! My mans can't let it go! That's so sad! For Wait, himself, go back! As he thinks they're ordinary the jewels. Roach. For Taranza, sadly, he's- Taranza, no! That's- <laughs> Bro, can he- <laughs> He just can't win, bruh. <laughs> Still hasn't been able to let go of Sectonia and believes that if he goes to the altar of the Divine Terminus, he'll be able to bring her back to she life. She ain't coming back, home. finally, for Susie, following in her late father's footsteps, she's begun to rebuild his company, determined to continue his work of mechanizing entire planets. So, okay, with the surface-level stuff out okay. of the way, let's get back to the main story. As Kirby liberated countless individuals who'd been plagued by the Jamba Hearts fragments, he'd come across... Sorry, swole DDD go crazy. <laughs> it's a massive spaceship that recently landed on Popstar, the Jam Bastion, housing three mage sisters intent on collecting the Jamba Hearts fragments. And while Kirby would end up thwarting their plans by defeating all three of them, uh -huh. it wouldn't slow down their master one bit, as once Kirby got to the Jam Vandra base, home to the three mage sisters and their master, it'd soon become pretty obvious what kind of being was sealed away within the Jamba Heart. Though by by far, is it a dark from matter? The absolutely massive amount of 
floor hidden in pause screens throughout the game. Much like Haltman before him, Highness, the mastermind behind the release of the Jamba Hearts, reveals an incredible amount of information solely through his quick conversation with Kirby. So for the sake of you all and so we don't jump around too much, let's start from the very beginning. As we already know, long ago there existed the Ancients, a widespread civilization responsible for a lot of the things you see Yay! in Kirby games. However, what we didn't know until now is that the Ancients were actually split into two factions, those who relied on science and machines, and those who relied on magic, with the latter also dabbling with dark matter. For a while, the two seemed to coexist with one another, with the magical Ancients even being the ones to stop a galactic crisis that threatened everything, which while not confirmed, is heavily implied to be Galactonite. Plus, this is also supported by the fact that he comes out of a portal Highness made in the What If mode of Star Allies. Though one day, for some unknown reason, the scientific ancients decided their magical counterparts were too much of a threat and betrayed them by banishing them to the edge of the galaxy in fear of What? their dominion over dark matter. And it's not like the magical ancients were even remotely evil either. Just take Highness. Long before his clan was betrayed and banished, he was actually a very kind individual. For instance, when he used to travel freely across worlds, he happened upon three girls. One nearly freezing to death in a blizzard, one Oh, and then you took- oh, then you took him in and you used them. Oh, God. One burning alive in an inferno, and one being on the verge of death right after she attempted to take her own life by getting struck by lightning. I'm sorry, Kirby got slower Schleidel characters? And their lore? What? <laughs> In all three cases, Highness saved them, at the same time unlocking their hidden potential for certain types of magic. Though after being betrayed by the scientific ancient, his once kindly heart began to become consumed by hatred and obsession. It'd be at this point that the now insane Highness would form a religion based around dark matter, believing that if he obtained and freed the being trapped within the Jamba Heart, that it'd deliver him and his followers to a promised land of sorts, at the same time restoring his now shattered clan. So so when Kirby finally makes it to the Divine Terminus, where Highness had been performing his ritual for who knows how long, uh -huh. he'd completely lost himself to the darkness within his heart, becoming the exact opposite of what he once was. Even when it came to the three sisters he'd saved eons ago, Highness, in his insane state, only saw them as tools to be used, becoming Man, that's- oh, My homie got too corrupt. Man, he drank the- he drank the sauce, dog. It sucks. Because from going from saving these girls to being... Man, abusive towards them at times. Yeah. Even once Highness was defeated, he'd become so obsessed with the revival of his Dark Lord that he sacrificed not only the three sisters Ooh! to it, but himself. What the fuck? No! No, that's so bad! No, that's so bad! Those poor girls! Oh my god, and himself, but those poor girls! the complete revival oh, of Void Termina. Oh, shut up! Now at first, Void Termina appears to be a massive hulking titan with incredibly destructive powers. You know, what you'd expect from a destroyer of worlds. But as the fight progresses, clearly there's something more to the humanoid than meets the eye. Just take its third phase, where alongside sprouting wings that look pretty familiar, it summons a replica of the Master Crown, all but confirming Void Termina to be the force controlling the original all along. But most uh -huh. There's Void Termina's fourth phase, where it straight up pulls an Earthbound and copies Kirby's face. What does this mean? Well, we'll get there in a second. That you are of... all evil. That I am a mere reflection of yourself. Can you kill me? <laughs> Inside uh, no. Kirby's face, as he progressed through the fight, Void Termina confirms what the entire game had been alluding to. The fact that not only is it dark matter, but it's the source of it. Now I know I'm kind of encroaching on theory territory here, but hear me out, because this just lines up too perfectly. As stated in various okay. boss screens, Void, aka dark matter, exists in all dimensions, accounting for instances like Dark Mind in the Mirror World, yep. and even Dark Crafter in Kirby and the Rainbow Curses Seventopia, though by far the Didn't most that changing one, piece of new information expressed by these paw screens is the true nature of Dark Matter. Remember how in the Dark Matter trilogy, Zero's only real weakness was the power of positive emotions? Well, it turns out that was a lot more important than we ever realized, because in this paw screen right here,
And in this pause screen right here, we realize that my tracker died. No! <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Plugged in. Phone findable. I mean, that's not my question though. Phone. Is it? It's okay. It's charging. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, give it a second. Okay, hold on. I think... Yeah, okay. Uh... What? What? Okay. Here, it's revealed that depending on the type of energy that's gathered, dark matter will not always necessarily be a force of evil, explaining how gooey even came to be. But aside from all that, using the information we get from paw screens and the fact that Void Termina's roar is literally just a slower version of Kirby's voice, there's a pretty good chance Void Termina is actually related to Kirby, with the what? game heavily alluding to the fact that if Void Termina was born using purely positive energy, he could very well end end up looking a lot like our titular Pink Puff, rather than a dark monstrosity. And on that note, taking all of that into consideration, not only does this game pretty much spell out the origin of dark matter, but from the information we're given, Kirby himself may very well be the outcome of Void being birthed with pure positive energy. So there you have it, right? All of Kirby Oh shit, so Kirby would be the balance! Let's go! Or wrapped up nicely with an Elder God? Well, not just yet, because after Void Termina was defeated, Highness would fall into a dimensional rift, absorbing all the dark energy Void left behind and encasing himself in yet another Jamba Heart. So in turn, once Kirby releases him and defeats him in his corrupted state, the three mage sisters who've also been corrupted challenge Kirby as well, leading to him both defeating them again and purifying them with a friend heart, finally resolving the hatred Aww. that had plagued them for so long. I'm so happy fact, for them! This is honestly Let's a pretty go. happy ending in Kirby terms, what with there being no dead dads and no dead crushes. Plus, in a completion God. picture for the mode, it seems like even Highness has finally begun returning to his old ways. Relax. Oh, that's so nice! Oh, thank God! We we needed some good, wholesome Kirby, man. We needed with the three mage sisters oh. on a beach. But wait just a second, no. since while Highness seems to have finally found peace within himself, oh. there's one more looming entity I haven't touched on. If you thought the lore around Void Termina was convoluted, then oh boy, you haven't seen anything yet. Oh god. So, okay, in Star Allies, there's a what-if mode called Guest Star Allies, where it depicts what would happen if one of Kirby's friends confronted Highness instead of Kirby himself. And like always, it's only the finale itself that really has any noticeable changes, since instead of fighting Void Termina, Highness instead decides to open up an interdimensional portal, once again releasing Galactonite onto the world. Damn, Galactonite so always be pulling don't know up. how they usually do this time. Instead, a familiar butterfly lands on the tip of his sword, completely absorbing Galactonite's immense power and creating Morphonite, a mysterious warrior whose design actually originated from the cancelled Kirby GameCube game. So as cool and completely <laughs> they digivolve in these motherfuckers for real. Random as Morpho Knight is, <laughs> let's touch on that butterfly for a second because I'm not joking when I say it's literally been with Kirby all along. While the oh. specific orange one has only appeared in every mainline game since Return to Dreamland, butterflies in general have been appearing alongside Kirby ever since the very first game, meaning a being capable of absorbing the actual strongest warrior in the galaxy has been with us this whole time. That butterfly now, go crazy! Thing, what in the actual hell? 
is even happening anymore with Kirby lore. And honestly, could you imagine just... if the butterfly was secretly trying to absorb Kirby, but it couldn't this whole time because per- Kirby's too powerful because of his positive energy and how it's the equivalent to the other entity, the other like dark matter like force like entity, right? So it's like technically that they're just trying to absorb other more powerful beings so the butterfly can get stronger so it can finally absorb Kirby, which is why it's by Kirby this whole time. <gasps> That's what I would guess, but no, I don't know. This one, I share your sentiment. As of now, Morpho Knight and the nature of the butterfly are mostly shrouded in mystery, with the only real information about them being the fact She's that the butterfly too is deep. a supposed being of paradise, and that Morpho Knight is associated with a judgment day of sorts, meaning Morpho Knight is somehow related to the Kirby afterlife? Absolutely insane, I know. So, well, that's about it. Or at least it is for now. To be honest, there's no telling what Hal has in store for us next, Hell, for all we know, <laughs> Yin Yarn could somehow end up being the key to everything. You really never know. But anyways, ranting like a madman about Kirby lore for so long has given me an appetite. How about some strawberry shortcake? Now I know this video isn't exactly the usual kind of thing I do on my channel, but hey, please tell me if you all enjoyed it. I'd be more than happy I to make I did enjoy life. this! I mean, hell, if you ask me, the Kirby timeline deserves an entire video on its own. And before- that, like, this creator's incredible. Link to the original videos in the description, by the way, for those of you guys who are watching, but this was incredible. Like, I love the attention to detail, the way that they help build the narratives for people like myself who just had no concept whatsoever going into it, the way that they would relate previous characters to, like, even if they were just small inserts, so that way when it comes up later on, it actually is more, like, digestible. The way they presented information was fantastic. I really loved this. And I didn't really... When y'all were talking about Kirby Lord chat like crazy, I would be honest with you. I wasn't fully like... I was like, eh, okay. Y'all are, you know, bullying me into this. But now... I got... I'm in deep in the sauce. <laughs> I'm deep in the Kirby sauce. God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching YouTube. Uh, again, original video in the description. Please go support original content. And while you're here, support me too. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm gods. I'm trying to hit 100k here on the second channel. Uh, if you don't know, I have another channel that hit 100k recently, so it'd be cool to have both. Anyways, I'll catch you later. Bye!